Woo! Screw ups, making it snappy. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Snappy. You're on with Mon. And with Don. And we make our own opportunities in the span of 10 minutes. For this episode, again, we have another guest here with us. So please go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Nicolette. I, I, uh, I used to be a freelance photographer and videographer, but now I work in marketing at Penny Fairs. And yeah, I'm pretty much a create. I've always been a creative and um, I love creating. <laughs> I'm actually excited to see what they're going to ask me because I wasn't sure why they called me on. So thanks for having me here. And yeah, let's, let's do it. Awesome. Well, that didn't put any pressure on us at all. Like we don't we don't work we don't work off questions here. Like we're straight off the top of our head. So this would be an equally interesting for both sides. Um, but yeah, what, mm. we, what we explained earlier, we have a ten minute timer. Once it starts, let's see along where the conversation goes, and then after that, whatever said or left unsaid, we'll just leave it as is. Um, but yeah, okay. So we'll start the timer in three, two, one. All right. So. It's very interesting whenever we have, you know, creative people on the show because it's very nice to see that there's a lot of, like, booming content creation being done now in its various, like, shapes and forms. So how did you get to, you know, where you are now being, well, being a former um, digital creative, doing all of these shoots and all of these, like, projects? How did you get to where you are now? Did you want to do this, like, since before college, Pa, or...? Well, actually, I started to make videos when I was just six years old. My mom mm. got a Nokia with a camera, and I was wow. really excited. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and then there was, um, I downloaded an app that was like a movie maker app, and you just mm. like put in random videos, and it sets it to music and stuff. And like, I just made a bunch, and I'd always steal her phone to make those. And then ever since then, I was like, wow, I really enjoy making videos and like just telling stories like this. So um, it just grew into kind of a hobby in high school. And then by college, I ended up taking communications and I studied it. And I, well, I, I ended up taking communications by chance. I didn't know it would be like a video and create, creative thing. I just, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to go to Taft, but I wasn't allowed. So um, when I signed up for Ateneo, I just put a random course and communication sounded easy. <laughs> I'm not saying it is to all my other comp people, but communication sounded easy. So I just put it and I ended up there and it ended up being about like lots of video production and broadcasting and um, studying films and stuff. So uh, it all ended up uh, pointing me towards like the creative process and production. And come pandemic, I graduated and um, my friends all started small businesses. Like there was that time during the pandemic, everybody just had a small business and they needed people to take pictures of their stuff and videos of their stuff. And I was free, <laughs> literally and uh, schedule wise. So they asked me to help them out and eventually it became my business over the pandemic and it lasted for a year and it was really really fun so i'd say it's thanks to uh, fate and friends trusting me or maybe being kuribot but <laughs> it ended up like being super beneficial for everyone i really had the time of my life um doing that uh but i guess what's interesting about me is i'm freelancer turned corporate and i actually really love it like lots of people quit corporate to go into freelance which mm -hmm. I understand because you have your own schedule and everything. But what I really love about um, working in marketing in corporate now, um, well, my company is a small company, so it wouldn't be like the typical nine to five hours, mm -hmm. strict bosses and stuff. We are just a team of eight. Everybody's super nice. And my bosses are like just like three years older than me. So they're not really... They want to do it like they don't want to get stuck in traffic they don't want to work late everybody starts working at 11 like that's kind of the culture nice, so, <laughs> nice. Yeah. that must be nice <laughs> yeah it's really nice <laughs> we have a really nice work culture and um i like having a boss <laughs> i really like having someone to tell me what to do after a while of mm. freelancing i was like 
I don't want to make my own decisions anymore. Someone please tell me what to do. And I found someone to boss me around. And it's awesome. <laughs> there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. It's a, it's a very cool story, nga, diba? You've said uh, you've always been a creative, diba? And funny, nga, because I completely agree with you when it comes to communications as a course. I did not think it involved, like, video shoots or broadcasting yeah, stuff, diba? Because it was, like, my second choice in college, eh. And buti na lang I got in my first choice, which was psych, diba? But if I landed in communications, I probably would have been a fish, like, out of water. <laughs> Oh. oh, it's crazy. But good oh. for you, Deva. I mean, like you said, fate, Deva, sort of like, um, since you were creative all your life and being in that course, you were able to be exposed to so many different facets, Deva. You know, videos, you know, photo shoots and all that, Deva. So good for you. And I also like na you mentioned you from being a freelance, you know, to being in corporate, Deva. That's completely fine, you know, like, wanting to have like somebody to follow the right? boss you know, sometimes you know, it's good to you know have kind a of direction like, that's set yeah have a direction <laughs> that's set you know collaborate with people and all that right? but at least you were exposed to both right? both the freelancing and the the corporate right? so yeah cool and you know during the pandemic right? doing something like this right? good for you right? i mean not a lot of people you know, have the motivation to, you know, do anything, right? Because it's so hard, right? Luckily, um, I had lots of people around me who were, like, pushing themselves to, to still make use of their time. And they're mm-hmm. the ones who uh, made me take pictures of their stuff and, and <laughs> video- make videos for them. And it all ended up really well. Mm-hmm. Um, are, you, are you guys also both calm? Uh, sorry, no, you're psych. And mm-hmm. uh, Anton, you're calm? No, I'm marketing management from DLSU. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I can imagine how much fun you must be having right now. Because marketing is really a magical thing. If you're super into like what you're doing and what you're trying to sell, it's the perfect fit for anyone. Because you really just need to know like what people want from certain things, right? And then you make the yeah. magic happen from there. I think yeah. that's the beauty of marketing. Yeah, and it kind of like takes the pressure off of you a little bit as a creator because before I kind of see each project as like my baby and this is yeah. something I want to put out in the world. But in marketing, it's more like what do these people want to see and I'll make mm. it for them, which exactly. isn't bad. It's It takes off a lot of pressure and if it doesn't work out, then it's not saying anything about you. It's more of like, okay, let's move to plan B. Yeah. Oh, and it's good that your experience as a creative before heading into marketing, but it's good that you have that experience but at least you have a base of how to go about things. So, yeah, great. So when you mentioned your projects, now, like, can I know, like, what are some of your favorite projects that you've worked on, you know, over the time that you were a uh, um, creative, digital creative? Okay, yeah, sure. So I... Did video photography and graphic design because I wasn't mm. sure which one I liked the most, but it ended up being <laughs> video. Lang. Yeah, on the lang. Mm. So uh, my favorite ones would be um, for photography. I really like the photos and the photo shoots I did with Estancia. It's a belt brand. Um, that was actually the first brand that approached me and asked me to help them out, and um, I ended up becoming their photographer for like half a year and it's it's wow, fun because like you can you. thank you you can really see like the progression of both of our, the brand and myself grow um uh i yeah i just like how those photos look like and for video um i think my favorite video would be a video i made for a cookie business called beyond bakery um and it, i liked it a lot because i spent like two months planning it and just like mm-hmm. learning transitions and um, thinking of cool ways to tell the story and it took me forever to edit but I, I don't know I, I had lots of fun with it and I'm really proud of it because of how it turned out <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah uh, yeah those are the, my two top favorite ones yeah uh, it must feel very fulfilling also you know, seeing like the project kind of 
come to life, you know, because it's also yeah. your vision and their vision also kind of coming yeah. together, right? Diba? So, yeah. Yeah, and it, since a lot of them were my friends, it was also, like, it was really nice to work with your friends and help each other out and, like, Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Be that excited. must have been so, like, nice. Yeah. It's easy but to work with them because you guys mm. kind of have a meeting of minds to understand what vision yeah. each of you want, right? And then it's so easy to communicate it. Like that's yeah. really the key, talaga. Communication is key, Communication. like in everything. Yeah. <laughs> Communication makes the world go round. Yeah. So yeah, those were the ones, and it and it's always fun, like telling the story of the brand. Oh yeah, and then you know that you contributed to helping them express exactly how they wanted to portray their brand, right? Because that's a piece of you and a piece of them together, and that's really the beauty of collaborations. Wow, what a <laughs> what a what a smooth story. Like it kind of just everything kind of aligned up for you. Like even now that you're not a freelance digital creative anymore, you're kind of still utilizing the skills that you learned there in your job now, which I think is why you you're enjoying it also now because you know it's still it's something different definitely from what you used to do, but you're still kind of in the same realm of creativity. So you still get to use like all the things you were so passionate about doing in this new job that you're in right now definitely and um it kind of feels like now i'm in a long term because when i in a long-term relationship with my work because before it did feel like kind of like i'm speed dating every other yeah. week i have a new client i'm talking to a new person and then i i don't see them again but then now like i really get to um test things see if they work and like grow with this brand and see the the monetary effects of my marketing whereas before like i just get a one time payment and then i don't know really how it worked out so yeah it's now it's nice to also really like commit yourself to a brand and then grow with it yeah it's a nice way to look at it i, I never really looked at it like that no mm. it, it is like speed dating when you're kind of doing <laughs> one project after another but then when you find this one really consistent thing that you have to put a lot of commitment into to make it work. Then it really is kind of like a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> We're serious <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have one last question. It's, it has nothing to do with like being a digital creative, but it's just something that we add every time we have a guest on this mini show to make it a little like fun and to switch things up a bit. So we have 30 random questions that we made ourselves and we numbered them 1 to 30. And every time we have a guest on the show, we ask them to pick a number and then answer whatever question is on the number. And then, yeah, they're super like all over the place. Like the topic is so random. It's not funny. There's no okay. uniformity here. So okay. go ahead and pick a number from 1 to 30. Let's do 23. Okay. okay. 23 <laughs> is... <laughs> okay. So, have you seen the movie 500 Days of Summer? Yes. Okay, mm-hmm. so who do you think was in the right? Oh. <laughs> no, we haven't. Uh. No one's picked this yet, so this is going to be interesting. Mm. This is the first, yeah. Um, I, I feel like maybe, oh my gosh, that's hard. I'd say, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I find them both to be in the wrong, but I, if I had to choose who's less wrong, maybe it's the. Maybe it's the guy. Because, okay. Okay. yeah. Because I feel like, okay, they're both wrong in the way that she wasn't being clear and she was also leading him on. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he would. Um, and he was really a victim of that. But I feel like what he did that was a bit worse was he was really romanticizing and idealizing mm-hmm. her and not really seeing her as um, Summer, the girl, but more of like Summer, my dream girl, like the perfect image of this girl. And that's why he'd also get so disappointed because he couldn't really accept the the, the bad things or the bad parts mm-hmm. of her. He just wanted to see um, this girl that was really in love with him, who was um, who liked to bike and wear dresses and was friendly with everyone. But uh, no one's like that. Nobody's a movie character. And I think he 
well, he was in a movie, but he he felt yeah. like he was he in a movie. He felt like he was in a yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you guys? <laughs> but that's answer. great, though. Like, I love yeah. your answer, though, because it's one of my favorite movies, and I share the exact same sentiments. Yeah, it's it's like, really like that. Like, that's the mm-hmm. that's the perfect answer that I think everyone kind of yeah like aligns with. Like, some of them really like say that Tom was in the worst because he really put too many expectations. But yeah, they were both kind of in the wrong. Yeah. Summer really did lead him on a bit and that's what caused him to have that unrealistic sense of hope, right? That yeah. made him overcomplicate things. So yeah, it's correct. Yeah, yeah. There's no right yeah. or wrong answer. I think people have done like <laughs> yeah, you, movie you analyses it. of this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> mm. Even the word romanticizing, like I had that in my head, man. When you said it, I'm like, oh, there we go, right there. <laughs> oh, wow, thank you. <laughs> I would like to thank all my film analysis professors for, the, oh, for bringing me to this yeah, moment. Yeah, it's really, it's really <laughs> a topic that we can talk yeah. about it for hours and yeah. hours. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was good. And that was thank yeah you. more than 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you See, guys I, right. I it went by fast. Yeah, yeah, that's why mm. it, it really feels just like five minutes. Um, is there anything that you want to plug? Any socials you want people to follow you? Check out your portfolio. How they can get in touch with you for like if if ever you're gonna get into doing like projects again? Okay, well, you guys can check out my portfolio, but you don't have to because I'm not update. I haven't updated it in a while. But if you want to see my past works, um, my Instagram is Nick dot election or you can also go to my website portfolio which is bit bitly slash ni collection that's ni collection um mm-hmm. but if, if you want to see my current works go to penny pairs <laughs> instagram <laughs> you'll see my i know my marketing over there and yeah that's all if you want to look at my instagram it's nick alby nick a l b y but no fresh. I mean, that's that's me. It's not my work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, there. Uh, we'll uh, be sure to plug everything down in the description of the the YouTube and Spotify. So yeah, we'll follow and support you also. Oh, thank you so much. I'll do the same mm. to you. Yeah, and please continue to do what you're doing because you know clearly it's something that you love doing and it's helping others to kind of yeah. show their visions to the world as well. That's really the beauty of all the creatives in the world, right? They're able to non-verbally express what a lot of companies cannot do themselves. Mm-hmm. So you guys are really like doing some magic for the world. So yeah, just keep so <laughs> just keep doing what you you're guys. doing. Of course. Thanks. And <laughs> yeah, thank you so much again for being here with us and for taking the time to be here today. Yeah. I know your schedule has been really like hectic, but like mm-hmm. really appreciate you allotting time to do this to be here so thanks guys it was my pleasure i had not that i wasn't expecting to have fun but i had more fun than expected All right. <laughs> so thank yeah. you so much yeah. Mm, not to hear that. yeah thank you to everyone who's been supporting our content everyone who's listening right now and watching this on youtube this has been another screw up snappy and we will see you guys in the next episode